Hey, Don, I'm back again. Okay, well, I'm fiddling around trying to stick this thing in the music stand while it was running, and uh, I somehow accidentally touched something that made it <clears throat> stop, which has actually turned out okay because I'm trying to get where I can be still and see the screen. The um, I got to reading. I couldn't read any of the output there. And uh, from reading the output, it was shutting down palm mouth and doing all this stuff. So it was still, and then it stopped after uh, shutting down palm mouth. It says, wait for palm mouth boot screen to quit. And then it's quitting some other things. And then, um, wait a minute, wait for palm mouth boot screen to quit. Well, what I, yeah, log out screen. Log out, log off, log out, log out, log out. Okay, so it was still logging out until it's shutting down. And I pulled out the, uh, I pulled out my DVD too soon. So I'm gonna just push the buttons quickly like that, see if it'll make it finish shutting, down, finish shutting down. Nope. Okay, <coughs> I'm gonna hold it in for four seconds. Do a hard shutdown. Yep. Okay, that's my um, other machine on the DVI input. So I'm going to turn him back on. Now I've got to get over here and hit my buttons on my monitor to get it back to the VGA input. DVI, you have to pick a default. and So I pick DVI because it's the one I use all the time. Alright, so we're booting up. See the little balloon? Do you know that's supposed to be a balloon? It took me a long time to figure that out. I had to go read about it. Okay, I'll hit escape. I hit the space bar because I wanted it to show the command line output, but why isn't it doing it? It's not doing it no matter what. <coughs> Maybe I'm hitting too many buttons, huh? It's already booted up. Okay. That's a fast boot. So, it says Don, not listed, oh, not listed, question mark. Okay, click on Don, okay, let's see. Hmm, what's my new password I just made for this thing? <coughs> Gotta get my hands steady. Again, I do not type with one hand well at all. Okay. I installed what I saw. Genome 3. I, I must have downloaded the wrong, uh, mislabeled. Well, I didn't relabel that. Okay, it's, it's got another setup. <clears throat> English is already checked. But I thought I was getting XFCE desktop, and I'm looking at Genome 3, unless this is their setup screen or something. Let's see, the way it's running on kind of like a stripped-down Genome 3. Of course, this machine would run Genome 3. So, <coughs> that's why it had me thinking. Okay, what's all this? Typing. Select your keyboard layout. Yeah, it's already selected to U.S. Location services allows applications to determine your geographical location and indication is shown when location services are used. First thing says privacy. Privacy controls can be changed. I don't do not want any location services, especially on my a desktop computer. Automatic problem reporting. Now that's fine. Sending reports of technical problems to improve Fedora. That's good. Avoids used used to be ABRT automatic bug reporting. I think they have a different different one now. Okay. <clears throat> Connect your online accounts. Huh. This is kind of weird. I'm gonna say Google, but I don't. 
Uh, that's what I thought. I'm going to skip that for now. All I want is just to have, you know, my web browser automatically log on when I get on Google. I messed around with OwnCloud. I had it on my uh, Fedora. Tw I, I upgraded my, well, I re had to reinstall because I couldn't upgrade. It wouldn't work. But I had Fedora 21 on that server and uh, had OwnCloud on, on, cloud on there too. But it was a pain to set. I could get I never could get it to it with my on my local network, and that's all I wanted it for. <clears throat> it wouldn't let me in, and I couldn't. Too much junk, you know, working in the back, working around with it, trying to get it to work. I got tired of messing with it. Would have been okay, I mean. But I use SFTP on for everything between my machines. It's quick, easy. I do anything I need to do. Let's see. You're all set. Okay. I guess it would have logged on to Google when I logged on to the machine. Getting started. Launch applications. Yeah, this is Genome 3. Switch tasks. Respond to messages. Browse the web. I don't think that can be read even if I get up close because it can't really hold still. Worth a try. <clears throat> okay, I think that's a video. Yep. You can use the Windows button. Wouldn't pay any attention. So, there's some little how to videos. That's alright. I'll have to watch those when I'm not holding a tablet in one hand and <coughs> trying to curl my mouse with the other. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, everything is telling you how to do stuff. I'll put that in my bookmarks. Okay, this must be like a desktop bookmarks. Search, menu, find, okay. I know that, I always remember that from when I did mess around with Genome 3. Let's see what we got. Firefox, Shotwell, GIMP, Inkscape, Blender, LibreOffice Writer. Okay, so yeah, this is definitely the remix. It's got things that Fedora doesn't put in there. Scribus, files, notes, show applications. <coughs> okay. Let's see if we can. Whoa, that's fast. I was rolling my mouse wheel. Let's see if I can use the uh, keyboard. When you go down and exit jumps. Well, it's got already got it LibreOffice. And I have, I, I'm not going to be able to use them anymore uh, now that they went from YUM to DM, DNF for the package manager. I, uh, I have all these scripts I've made over the years where I can just run my YUM, install scripts, and install all the apps I want from my other systems. And I tried that on the Fedora 23 server and it would not work. It, hung up, it doesn't, DNF doesn't have skip broken. And uh, I could I could uh, always use Skip Broken if there's a little app here and there that didn't work and you know maybe something didn't work. I, actually, I never really ever noticed it. Once in a while, I'd see find something that I wanted to try it out that uh, that didn't work, and I just use something else. But I have like 3,500 apps on my Fedora 14 system, and of course I don't use them all, but when I want something once in a while, you know, that I don't use very often, but it's really helpful, I want it to be there. I can't remember the names of all that stuff, and installing them, it took me years to find that stuff, and of course some of, a lot, some of those things that were in Fedora 14, that's why I keep using it, because some of that stuff's not even available anymore. But there's the other things like your web browser, you know. Um, I, well, I have for, Firefox and Thunderbird installed in standalone mode, so they uh, they automatically update themselves. That's the only reason I still do that, because you know that they get the secure. They update to the newest versions and all the security updates and everything. 
but uh, it's getting to the point where well Chrome won't work anymore I, well it would work but it doesn't get any updates but I got too many I got too many I save a lot of bookmarks and I got too many bookmarks in it and it, for some reason it it quit uh, it, it just shoots up all the processor trying to just trying to open up so, so I don't use Chrome any I never like Chrome much anyway but I use it sometimes in in other newer machines newer uh, newer Fedora OS's but there's our Firefox let's see what version of Firefox they give us I set everything up the way I like it and these are all not set up the way I like it so see I don't have my customized I'm gonna fool with everything right now I just wanted to get my menus back up there I don't see them you have to do that uh oh anyway I use I still keep my you know file edit and all that up there I have to remember I'll have to remember how to do that but you could do it right quick right there used to you just right clicked up in the top and you'd be able to select what you wanted to show well there's some of it right there oops oops not what I wanted Okay, so I right clicked and let go and it jumped back up. Firefox. So there it is, it works. Don't really have anything else to look at right now. I wonder if weather works. Yeah, you gotta put something in there. It's like a freaking tablet and I hate tablets. I can't even use them hardly. Why is my I see one dot 0.x on the screen of the tablet so now what it, I didn't do anything that I know of unless my hand touching the screen <clears throat> it took me about an hour and a half two hours to get the freaking password for Gmail typed into this tablet when I set it up for my a family member when they got it for Christmas they don't know how to do anything so you cannot touch those little tiny things can't see them I had to use a magnifying glass and glasses to read the thing until I finally got to a point where I could figure out how to make the text bigger but it is a really cool little camera if you just had a way to hold it need a way to need a tripod for it then you could it actually touched really surprisingly well and since I don't have anything a real camera anymore not bad okay Ooh, larger text smarter text well, there's nothing else to look at here just apps and yeah <clears throat> I guess these kind of setups are fine for you know a tablet and a phone but this is a desktop computer not a tablet not a phone I don't know how to, I, I use uh, keyboard shortcuts a lot, and uh, well, I'm sure there's some will work in here, but, so anyway, at least the, one good thing about that screen there, that it makes the uh, icons big, where you can really see them, of course the icons are giant and the text is a little small, you can make the text a little bigger, just saw that a minute ago, Large, larger text, yeah that's a little better. Yeah. I guess it's different. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Okay, so it runs. And here's what I want to know. Let's see. I want to reboot. And let's see. I should have. I didn't see that. Maybe am I going to have to manually add Windows 7 into Grub? There's an app that I've used before to do stuff like that. There we go. But guess what? No Windows 7. You have to hurry up and hit the keyboard to pause it. I always hit the down arrow key. So there's the uh, rescue and the first kernel before it gets updated. So guess what? I gotta get in there and uh, figure out how to. Oh, I should be able to just run update grub. Let's see, Grub 2 is different than Grub 1. Still, still get, still a little, 
have to think hard. I have to go look it up usually. It's actually, if you remember how to do it, it can be really easy in Grub 2. Like just, mm, they change things. At first, you could like install a, a little app and then run update Grub, and that would just automatically do it. But I'm not sure if it does that anymore. But uh, then there's a the Grub. The GUI Grub Control program that I found that was working pretty good, and then seems like in the last in Fedora 21 and up, it kind of works, but not really. And, and once you uh, change anything in there, like I tried to change the boot uh, splash screen. I actually made one for somebody. I built a computer for somebody. I made one with instructions, you know, written into the image. You know, I used like GIMP and stuff to write them in there because they didn't know how to do it, couldn't remember how to do things, how to select their OS and all that. Because I had Windows 7 and uh, actually Corora, the remix of Fedora, on there for them. 21, I think it was. <coughs> and uh, I couldn't ever get it to show up. You have to, it's real, and that boot screen is real particular. It has to be the right size, the right shape. And I never really could find anything telling me, you know, how, how big can it be, what shape does it need to be. But I did figure out it had to do with the shape and uh, probably the uh, megabyte size of it, too. Although you can use pretty good sized files, like three to five megabytes, I think, for a boot screen. Yep, you can just hit enter there. Along, well, of course the mouse was sitting over it, but uh, oh, let's look up here. Okay, there's some settings. Um, there should be that's your network thing, I believe. Yep, volume. I guess since I don't have another desktop, it's not showing another desktop. I'm going to have to end up working in this Genome 3 until I get... I still don't understand. My file that I burned to my DVD drive said XSCE desktop. It did not say Genome 3. Oh, there we go. Genome, Genome Classic, Genome on Wayland. I don't even know what that is. I have to look at that. But no, I do not have any other desktops. Just, you know. Okay. Well, I'm going to stop the video now. And, uh, well, uh, <coughs> I'll go full with it. I'm getting really, really hungry. I ate some chocolate, a little chocolate bar, a little bitty baby two bite chocolate bar, and some cashews, which is pretty good, but I'm starving right now. There it is. Let's see. You know, it's not not too bad, really. Small small box didn't take up a lot of space. Of course, I like to be able to add, you know, big video video cards and stuff like that. There's one PCI. Imagine it, it actually kind of looks like a regular PCI slot. It seems to be too big to be a PCIe. I thought it said in the specs it was a PCIe. Yeah, it's dirty. I haven't blown it out yet. I've been messing with it every day and I haven't even blown it out yet. But, uh, I don't know if you can really tell. Whoa, that's hard to get right. But it's not very big at all. And I wouldn't, I'm not going to open it up now, but, uh. But, you know what happens when I do that? I know I'm pointed at me, but I can't see where I am in the shot. So, anyway, this is Don. Sign it out, and we'll come back. Probably won't come back with any more on this one. Well, maybe later. But uh, I just thought I've been kind of wanting to do a video like this. It's hard to set up and get your screen. That's for sure. This is probably the, other than the jumping around. It's probably the best best video I've gotten. Now, I, oh, I see. My zoom keeps changing because my finger keeps touching stuff. Now it's zoomed at, uh, I thought, 1.4. That's why I can't, I can't, I'm having to touch it, you know, touch it to my nose. I don't know how I did that. That's just my hand brushing against the screen. Okay, so, uh, there's your little vlog in. Fedora 23 with Genome 3. Okay. Soon to be changed. Actually, I'll probably I'll be running Mate on this one. I like Mate. It, I run XSCE on the older machines because it's uh, it's 
lightest weight desktop that they that they got that I like. But uh, uh, like a lot of things out of the XSCE, like the app search and stuff, I always put that on my mate desktop. So. Um. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on the thing. First thing I want to do is make sure the dual boot's gonna work and all that stuff. And uh, shoot this one, I might be able to make some okay desktop videos off of it because it's uh this is an uh, quad core i5 it has three. Well, it has four gig of RAM. I I opened it up and looked on the specs uh, apps uh, like hardware lister and stuff. It shows up as three gig, but I think what it is is uh, I wasn't paying much attention. I looked around BIOS, but I think the uh, I think the um, the video is using like a whole gig of memory, which is fine as long as it runs good. And uh, especially for a computer that somebody gave you, not bad at all. And it's uh, it's the, uh, the fastest other thing I have is a two gigahertz uh, Core Two. With three gig RAM laptop, the one that's laying there under the, and that's not very fast. So anyway, we'll see how it does. This might be, it'll probably be my daily machine for a while until I get to where I can get that eight core AMD that I've been wanting. So anyway, this is Don signing out. Bye bye.